dead who did these things, we dedicate this program, The Dam Busters, presented by the author himself, Paul Brickhill, dramatized by Morris West, an Australasian radio production. speaking. After the excitement of the Tirpitz came anticlimax. Unbroken cloud lay over Europe for weeks, making high-precision bombing impossible. As they couldn't work off their high spirits in action, the 617 boys got rid of them in their own way back at the station. They didn't realize that Cochrane was preparing another shock for them, although by this time it was a shock they should have been used to. Uh, it's true, chaps. I'm going. Well, that's what the gentleman said. I mustn't strain the luck too far, so I'm grounded. Oh, well, it's fair enough from your point of view, Skipper. Four DSOs and two DFCs is enough gongs for any man to collect. But um, what about the squadron? Well, chaps, I don't know. Cochrane doesn't know either. When I saw him at headquarters, he told me he was a bit stuck. There was nobody on the list who really appealed to him. Well, that's a pretty lookout, isn't it? 617, the crack squadron, the boys who sank the turpins. Oh, oh, no, 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 look, I'm serious, I'm serious, listen. And the next CO they send us will be some lousy crock that Bomber Command wants to get rid of. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, listen, chaps, now, for Pete's sake, quit binding about it. Cochrane's never let us down yet, has he? Well, no, but there's always got to be a first time. Besides, Cochrane himself admits he's scraping the bottom of the barrel... Come in. Uh, good of you to see me at such short notice, sir. Um, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, forgive me, I, I'm a little preoccupied. You're Fakir, aren't you? Air Commodore Fakir. That's right. Yes, I, I heard your call. You didn't mention what you wanted to see me about. I didn't want to prejudice these discussions before they were properly started. I have an open mind on most things. Well, then, here goes. You have a vacancy, the command of 617 Squadron. I'd like to have it. Why? It's a good outfit. Handles tough business. I think I'd like to join it. You're, um... You're near Commodore. This is only a wing commander job. Well, uh, <laughs> at least that should convince you I'm not chasing promotion. Yes. <laughs> well, you're the first man who's ever asked me to cut his pay and reduce his rank so they can have the privilege of being killed. Well, I think you'd die quicker sitting behind a desk. You, you were a commercial pilot, weren't you? Well, back home in Canada, they called us bush pilots. It was either a curse or a compliment, uh, depending on the way you looked at it. Yes, but I'll, um, I'll take a look at your record. In view of your present rank, I... <laughs> I imagine it'll bear close inspection. Uh, there is one thing, however. Yes, sir? Uh, 617 isn't an easy squadron to handle. They're, um... Well, they're, they're a little above themselves. A little, um... A little conscious of their reputation. A little jealous of trespass. Uh, they regard themselves... As an elite, uh, which they are. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to make things tough for the newcomer. Uh, they did it to Cheshire, and they they did it to Tate. Well, I guess if I can take what they hand me, uh, I guess they'll take what I give them. Yes, well, that's sound enough, sound enough. I'll be quite frank with you, Farquhar. Uh, I searched my list for a man to take this job, and... And you're the first one who recommends himself to me. Uh, I'll have to think about it a little more, of course, but one way or the other, I'll be in touch with you very soon. Uh, there is one thing, however. Yes, sir? 
If you take this job, you'll have to see that the squadron is kept out of the muck and stays as good as ever. That's easy enough in operations, but in bad weather, idle weather, like we're having now, it's, it's quite a problem. Sorry to be late, sir. I had a bit of a job getting here. That wind's a tearing gale. Well, Chiefy, what are the boys doing? Oh, well, sir, half of them are doing PT in the oil. The other half are uh, shoveling snow off the runway, sir. Hmm. Are they happy? Well, uh, sir, I wouldn't exactly say they were happy, <laughs> but they are very busy. Also, they're in better condition, sir, and they've been for a little while. Good work, Chiefy. Yeah, but I wish this damn weather would break. Then we could give them some real work again. Yes, sir, quite a wee. Well, uh, any further orders, sir? Yeah. PT tomorrow morning as usual. Lecture at 1100. And the rest I'll let you know later. Very good, sir. That's all, Chiefy. Park, we are here. Ops room? Hi. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, good, good. I'll be right over. <laughs> all, all, all right, chaps, all right. Hey, look, uh, I know you've been sitting about for weeks now... Waiting for the weather to clear, but... Uh... Hey, break it down, Skipper. We've been waiting for the weather, but we certainly haven't been sitting down. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll buy you a beer on that when you get back. <laughs> the weather is a couple of points better than bad, so they've given us a job. It's, uh... It's here. Bergen again, eh? You bet, Pin. Piece of cake. According to the reports on your last job, it should be. But, uh, this time, there's another factor... Fighters. Well, that's yeah. unusual. I thought maybe... It's unusual, but logical enough. The U-boats are Germany's last effective weapon of attack. So she's going to protect them with everything she's got. Intelligence reports say simply, expect fighter opposition. Could be in strength. Yeah. Well, that tells you as much as it tells me. Um, no chance of fighter cover for us. Not a hope. Too far. Besides, they need them in Europe. Or so they tell me. Now, you know the target layout. The uh, bombing order will be... the last of them, Chiefy. Iverson's home, Castagnolo's home. That leaves... Mr. Ross, sir. Mm. Yeah. By all accounts, he bought it this time. Funny thing, you know, sir. I always liked Mr. Ross. One of the old hands he was. That... Watch her, Chiefy. Watch her. Home again. <laughs> Mr. Ross, sir. 
Oh, where the hell are... I mean, uh, I mean, where did you spring from, sir? Out of the drink. Yes, he rescue picked us up. It was ready cold in that dinghy. Uh, do, you, uh, do you know what I was doing, sir, when you walked in? No, Chief, you what? You was typing out your death notice. <laughs> little premature, isn't it, Chiefy? Just a little premature. <laughs> Well, Wallace, how's the big fellow going? The big bomb. Oh, it's going very well now, Cochrane. We're nearly ready, in fact. But we've had the devil's own trouble with the thing. Well, um, well what's been the trouble? Oh, same old thing. The search for an alloy strong enough to stand up to the shock. The English Steel Corporation made it finally. But that wasn't the only thing. The next job was casting. Do you know, Cochrane, that for each bomb... They have to build a, um, an individual concrete-covered core, which must be accurate to a ten-thousandth of an inch. They have to position that exactly, exactly inside a sand surface mould, pour the metal in and wait for it to cool. Then they have to send it a hundred miles for machining. <laughs> I don't mean to bore you with this, but it's interested me profoundly. <coughs> you know, Cochrane, we've had a thousand craftsmen on this job, and only about a dozen of them know what it's all about. You know, that really does surprise me, Wallace. The security of these things is usually the hardest to handle. Well, officially, the thing is labelled a boiler. That doesn't fool anyone, of course. Some of the workers think it's a new type of midget submarine. Most of them are content to call it the big blighter. And uh, have you tested it yet? Oh, my dear chap, we are still working on the problem of transporting and filling it. The army has all the cranes... The railways can't carry it, so we have to build special trailers. Then at the filling factory, we have to build a special platform around it and put in the explosive a bucket at a time. Oh, there are a lot of buckets in ten tons. Uh, well, what about the fuse? Remember you had trouble with the tall boy? That's almost completed. But it has been very tricky. It's the same old problem to design a delicate timing mechanism strong enough to withstand impact at a thousand miles an hour and still function accurately. And I, I think we've done it all right. Well, when can we start testing? My dear Cochrane, there's no question of testing, no question at all. You'll, well, you just have to take our word for that. What, you, you mean... The I big... mean, these things are so difficult and so expensive to make that we, we can't afford to waste a single one. You'll just be given a bomb and told to drop it on target. And, um... Hope to God it goes off. As usual, Cochrane let no one know of the excitement he was feeling. Now the big bomb was almost a reality. I've called you here, Farquhar, to tell you... By the way, I suppose you'll be delighted to see that I've got your name correct at last. Oh, that's OK, sir. I must say, with that spelling, well... <coughs> it reminds me of a bloke we had at school, but... So that's beside the point. Uh, I called you here to tell you that as soon as the weather clears, you'll be undertaking a rather unusual operation. Yes, sir. You'll be using for the first time a... Uh, a ten-ton bomb, called for the purposes of the operation, the Grand Slam. Whew. Ten tons is a hell of a Grand Slam in anyone's language. Will the crates be able to carry them? We'll see that they do. There'll be only two bombs carried on this operation. Uh, you and Calder will carry them. Your aircraft will be specially modified to carry them. Oh, uh, how modified, sir? I want to get this part clear. Uh, you, you'll have new Merlin engines. The um, fuselages and undercarriages and main beams of the bomb bays will be specially strengthened, and um, the bomb doors will be taken off. They, uh, they couldn't close around this fellow anyway. I'd like to suggest, sir, that if we're to drop this new ten-tonner on an operation, we should have some test runs. Yes, well, I agree with the principle, my dear chap, but... Um, 
Its practice is out of the question. Oh, then at least we should be present at a test drop. Yes, but again, it's most desirable. Again, quite impossible. With all respect, sir, this is the craziest damn thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> yes, I couldn't agree more. But the factors against us are expense, the slow production rate, and lack of stocks. So there will be only one test. One bomb will be detonated on the ground. Then the same day, you will drop two others on a, on a target to be selected. You know, sir, I think the joke's on us. Huh? Uh, uh, what joke? Well, sir, usually the scientists have to stand around and watch while we test and retest calculations that they have tested a thousand times already. This time we have to take their word for it. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> I wondered why Wallace was looking so smug. For the first time since the beginning of the war, we just have to take his word for it. Tonight's operation is important in itself, but it is also important as a piece of training for an operation which will be carried out in the near future. A very, very important operation. Every operation is equally important to 617. <laughs> well, your most important operation, Nicky, is to keep your trap shut while we attend to the business in hand. Oh, sorry, Skipper. Now, this is the position strategically. Eisenhower's armies are gathering for a leap across the Rhine right into the heart of Germany. However, there are still very strong concentrations of German arms and supplies up here in the Ruhr and in northwest Germany. Now, the commander-in-chief has asked all the air forces to disrupt, as far as possible, the communications between the German frontline troops and those supplies and reinforcements in the north. Tonight's operation is part of that plan of disruption. What's the specific target, Skipper? The specific target is the Bielefeld Viaduct here. Oh. Well, this squadron's not very happy about Viaduct, Skipper. Oh. We've had a crack, crack at a couple and they're still standing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's see if we can break the hoodoo tonight. Now, now, the first problem is the flight plan. We have to cross some of the heaviest flak areas in Germany. And the best we've been able to do for you isn't very good. So, uh, this is the route you'll take in, and this is the way you'll come home. Well, couldn't they give us fighter protection just for once? Yeah, According yeah. to the intelligence boys, you won't need it. Germany's pretty low on fighters now. Well, she wasn't so damn low on the Norway run. Yeah, well, the answer is no fighters. Now, let's take a look at the photographs. From 18,000 feet, this is what it looks like. Yeah, just a straight line. <laughs> Well, don't ask me how we're going to hit it. I wouldn't know either. But the AOC seems to think that by using tall boys and getting some near misses, we might be able to bring it down. I agree that on the face of it, it's like playing darts and trying to hit the lines and not the spaces. <laughs> uh, all right, any more questions? Uh, yes, Skipper. You, um, you mentioned a new and special operation. Any idea what it is? Uh, it's not for publication yet, Nicky, but it's something out of the box. The only thing I want out of the box is a grounding order and an indefinite leave pass. <laughs> well, you crack the viaduct for me tonight and I'll get you some leave. Okay, Skipper, it's a deal. This is Leader calling Ash Sugar. Come in and bomb Nicky over. Coming in, Skipper. One eye on the target, one on the leaf, boss. Over. Keep both eyes on target. Good luck. Pass, Skipper. No leave pass, Nicky boy. There are the recce photographs. There are craters all around the damn thing, right in its shadow, but the viaduct is still there. Yeah, it looks a bit like that hotel they built in Tokyo to withstand the earthquakes. Shake it as much as you like, it still stands up. 
Trouble is, there's not much to shake in a structure like that. Each pillar of the viaduct is a separate construction. Unless you throw the pillars out, you won't shift the arches. And there's so much free air about that the surface blast is dissipating. All of which, my dear skipper, was repeated in every operation report on the Antio viaduct. It's just working by guess and by God. Now, just a minute, Niggy. Is that you, Farquhar? Yes, sir. Uh, have you seen the wreck, if any, Bruss? Yes, sir. Very disappointing. I'd like to have another go. As many as you say, sir. This one would be with the Grand Slam. Now you're really talking, sir. When? Within 48 hours. I'm going down with Waris to see this ground test. Uh, meantime, uh, I want you to stack up another operation and wait for word from me. Very good, sir. Uh, what will the word be? Uh, the, the word will be, um, the beast went off all right. <laughs> It's a lovely day, Waters. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, a little unseasonable, though. Well, um, if the weather holds, we'll... we'll christen the Grand Slam tomorrow. Well, let's not rush it, my dear chap. After all, we haven't had the test yet. <laughs> I seem to remember, Waters, that it was you who deprecated the idea of the test. I seem to remember that we, um... we had to take your word for it. Oh. <laughs> well, you must admit, Cochrane, I've had so few victories over your people that even a Pyrrhic one is something. <laughs> By the way, what target are you trying this on? The Bielefeld Viaduct. Viaduct, eh? Oh, well, that's interesting, very interesting. In the case of a viaduct, of course, a great amount of the shock wave is dissipated. But it's a splendid test. A splendid test. I couldn't have asked for anything better. We've had one crack at it with the tour boys. We got several near misses, but the the structure wasn't damaged. Get the same near misses with this big fellow, and I'll guarantee a result. What's the delay? Last-minute adjustments to the fuses. Also, we, we've had a certain amount of trouble with the positioning of the camera. We're using the same trick as before, you know, photographing through a mirror. But we've been having some difficulty with the refraction. Shouldn't be long now. Yes, it's... It's been a long time, Wallace, sir. A long time. When I look back on it, it all seems to have gone all too quickly. But when I remember the frustration and the hopelessness of those first months, I don't think I'd care to go through them again. Tell me, Wallace, um, as a scientist, a scientist diverted from uh, creation to destruction... Where do you see your own future? You touch a nerve that's given me many sleepless nights, Cochrane. In one sense, my work will not change very greatly. I shall still be occupied with problems of applied science, aerodynamics and supersonics, stresses and strains. But I shall never again be able to divorce my researches from their possible consequences. I shall never again be able to sit in the lotus bar of the pure research worker and quit myself of any responsibility for the use or abuse of my researches. I may not be able to control them. It's one of the facts of life that no man can control the use of a knowledge which he gives to the human race. But a at least I, I shall try to have a voice to, to, well, to write a commentary in the margin of my researches, so that those who use them may do so with profit to themselves and to their fellows. It sounds odd, doesn't it, in the face of that shining monster over there? But it's sincere nonetheless. You see, Cochrane, that's what I've been doing, I and men like me, creating monsters and handing them over to men like you. Yes, and... And I, in turn, hand them to men who might be my own sons. God, what is it? It's, it's a tangled world. We are both tired. Come on, let's get this over with. All set? All set, Mr. Wallace. Oh, uh, 
Prepare to detonate in ten seconds from now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, zero. Well, that's it, Cochran. The Grand Slam. As you say, Warriors, that's it. Uh, may I use this phone? Uh, go ahead. Hello, Toll. I, um, I want you to give me an immediate priority call to the Air Force Station at Woodall Spa. Yes, yes, that's right. Woodall Spa. Now, uh, the person I wish to speak to is Wing Commander Farquhar. Yes, uh, Farquhar. The, the, the caller is Air Vice Marshal Cochrane. Uh, thank you very much. I, I'll hold on. Are the boys all ready to go? All they're waiting for is word from me. Farquhar here. Hello. Hello. Hello, Farquhar. Uh, this is Cochrane here. Yes, sir. I just thought I'd tell you. The beast went off all right. Uh -huh.